Welcome, this is my latest video on my FL Sun Q5 3D printer series. And if you find this video helpful, I'll put a link in the description to some of the hardware I'm using. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So in this video, I'm going to be printing one of these heart gears. So these are a bunch of gears that you combine together to make this heart that is, has like some 3D function to it, kind of like a fidget device. So if I scroll through these pictures here, you can see what it looks like. And I'll put a link in the description of this on Thingiverse where you can download this model. So I'll go ahead and download this. Okay, I'll go to my downloads folder. And there are three different files here. Well, three different models, and then you have the SCAD. So you can use OpenSCAD to actually edit this and modify it and do all sorts of things with it. But if you just want to print the heart itself, you have three files. You have heart gears one, two, and five. And if you look at the instructions down here, it says there are three different gear ratios. There's one to two, two to three, and five to six. So I've done the one to two before, and I'm going to try the five to six this time. So it takes five revolutions of twisting this to turn it into a heart. So it'll be a heart, you'll twist it, you can twist it five times, and then it turns back into a heart, which I'll demonstrate later. So it doesn't give a lot of parameters on what you should set up to print this. So I'll open up the model. I'll take heart gears five dash six, and I'll drag that into Cura. So by default, this is too large to fit on the build plate, and you could split this out using some different software, but I'm just going to shrink it down. So I'll select this. I'll make sure I have on the left this selected where it's the move tool, and I'll click on the red arrow, and I'll just slide it over, and I'm going to line up that green line and arrow with the center of the build plate, so that way I know it's centered. Next, I'll click on the resize tool, which is the second one here, and our build plate is 200 millimeters wide, but this is actually kind of rectangular shape, so you can't just change this to 200 millimeters, but I actually went quite a bit smaller and I went to 100 millimeters. That prints a little bit faster. And this is a size that I've actually tried, although I tried it with one of the different hearts, but I'm guessing it'll work with this one too. But you could also go with something like 150, or you could just play around with the numbers to see what you think will fit on the build plate. Plate. So 150 might be better, but that takes I think three plus hours to print and this one will take I think about an hour I can't remember exactly so you can see all the parts we have here It has these little pins that hold everything together We have the middle block and then we have the different gears So if I go into my settings here, we'll take a look at what I have set up for that I'll go to my recommended first So I have the 0.2 millimeter layer height the infill I have set to 15 and I have no support and no adhesion so now I'll scroll down here and look at things that I have that aren't default. So the infill I have set to 15, as I said earlier. And then I have infill before walls turned off. And I have retraction speed and distance changed here. I have the distance at 8 millimeters and the speed at 80 millimeters per second. I have build plate adhesion set to skirt, and that just draws a line around the print. I think that's everything here. Okay, so we'll slice it up. Okay, so our print time is one hour, 25 minutes, and our cost is 37 cents. So I'll save this to a file, and I'm using a blue PLA. Save that to my downloads. Now I'll go into Safari. I'm going to be using Octoprint, and I'll put a link below to my FLSun Q5 playlist where you can find my video on setting up Octoprint. I really like Octoprint. I have it set up on a Raspberry Pi, and it allows you to monitor your prints, and you can do time lapse and things like that. So if I go to Control here, you can see a video of my build plate. So the first thing I'm going to do is clean this with some alcohol. Since this model has some small areas that touch the build plate, I'm going to increase the adhesion by using a glue stick. So once this alcohol here dries, I'll smear that on. To know where you need to put your glue stick, just look on your model on Cura, and then kind of guess where that lies on the plate, and then you know have a safe margin around it. So now I'll turn the printer on and I'll connect up to it. I'll go to temperature here. I'll change my tool to 200, not 2000, and the bed to 60. I'll hit the check mark there, so that's heating up. I'll go to upload my model, my G code. There we go. So once this goes up to temperature, what I'll do is I will pull back the extruder lever and I'll press a little bit of filament through, and then I'll take a paper towel and I'll wipe it off. Okay, everything's up to temperature. I'll hit the little print icon and it will start printing. So I'm going to let this print and hopefully I'll get a good time lapse out of this and then we'll go over the procedure for assembling this. And as it prints this skirt, I can see if I put the glue stick in the right spot, and it looks like I did. Okay, I have all the parts printed out here. So we have all the gears. We have the center little cube thing, and then we have all these clips. And on the Thingiverse page, it has some links to some videos on how to put this together, but I'm going to demonstrate it myself just for this video, but you might want to watch that video. It's probably better. So all these clips will fit on this cube thing. You just press them in. So in here, these clips, 
have a certain orientation, you have to stick them in, but you can stick either side in of the clips. So I'll press them in until they click. Okay, so now I have it like this. So we want to find the top of the heart that has the little split in it, like that, or the little dip. And that will go on one side. And I'm going to lubricate this, and I'll be using this silicone grease. And this is like a plumbing grease, but it should be safe with plastic. It's very thick. So I'm going to take a tiny amount of this. That might even be too much there, and I'll just put it on the surface here. And that's going to go on one of these sides. So I'll just click it on like so, and you can see that's rotating. Next we want to, well, if you want to separate out your parts, you'll notice some of these are mirror images of each other. So like these two are mirror images. And these two are mirror images, and this is the bottom piece. And you'll have this one. It's the only one like it. There's no mirror image. And you want the top of the hump here to be towards the top. And you want to line up this top piece. So if you look at it straight on, there'll be one on this side and two on this side. And you want that single gear to line up with this stud here. And then this piece is going to clip on it. I had that wrong. Twist it one. There we go. So this will clip on like so. Boy, it's hard doing this watching it through my viewfinder. So I'll put a tiny bit of grease on here. And I'm not trying to put grease in the hole. I'm trying to get it on the surface itself. So here it is from this angle. And there we go. And you can see that shape there. Okay. So I don't know if I explained enough, but um, you want to put this first piece on one of these that's just a triangle. You can see that some are a triangle and some are hexagons because they have these tiny little flats. It's like a triangle with little flats on the tips. So you want this first one to be on a small side. So next we take these two pieces that are mirror images of each other and those will go onto here like so and it'll go on about like that. I'm going to get the grease on them real quick. So one is going to go on the front and the other is going to go on the back. So I'll test fit that there. That looks about right but okay so now I got it off a little bit. You can see it's not lined up so I'll just pop it off of there. That didn't look right either. Let's try this other piece. Now that looks close, but that's not quite right. It's not smooth. So I'll try repositioning that. I'm going to lift it up and move it one gear tooth. No, that's not good. Nope. I'm going to try the other piece again. That one looks a little better. So I'll try this on the other side. Okay, I think we got it there. So you can see those are symmetrical here. And it's smooth. So now this piece is going to go down here. Okay, I think I got that in upside down there. Okay, I think that's good. Let's see. Yeah. Next, I'll put the bottom on. And I think this piece may be symmetrical, but I'm not completely sure. It's getting kind of hard to handle right now. Like maybe like that. So I have these two pieces left and these are symmetrical. So I'm just going to see how these fit in here. That seems to fit pretty good.
and that too. So you can tell you did it right, or this thing likes to move, if you can rub your finger around it and it feels relatively smooth. Obviously there's gaps here, but I think we've got it. So here's the first one I made, and this one, if you turn it once, like so, I may have turned it back. <laughs> it. Let's try this again. There we go. And this one is supposed to turn, I think, five times it said. Wow, this one's kind of crazy. Wow, that took a lot of commitment. I mean, I guess if it's a heart, maybe that's okay. So I think this one was a little easier to put together. You can see this had large gaps in it, so it was a little bit more confusing to put together. And you know, this one fit a little bit tighter. So if you're starting out, you might want to do this one. You know, I was kind of nervous these would pop off here because they can easily pop off. And you can see on the top here how these two mesh up here. See at the top of this one too. So it's kind of similar. And there's the bottom. So yeah, this one that you turn five times has larger holes in it. So, and I haven't done the one in between, the one that does two turns. But this is a nice little trinket and it's a nice little Valentine's gift, I think. I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, this is kind of a neat thing where you turn it once. This one you have turned five times, so it could be frustrating. <laughs> so, you know, if the person you're giving it to isn't patient, this may not be the best gift for them. But I just wanted to show my experience at printing these out and putting them together. Like I said, the video on the Thingiverse is going to tell you how to put them together. There's actually two videos. I've only watched one of them. But, um, you know, I'm not doing the best instructions on how to put it together. So you can watch those videos if you want to do that. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.